Okay, with that great knowledge that is so important for the multi-agent case, um, I want to introduce this concept of centralized versus decentralized or decentralized control. Uh, I kind of alluded to it already. Uh, centralized controls is what you see right here. Right, You have one agent that is controlling multiple platforms. The physical separation there may be an issue. Right, So sometimes there are cases in which you cannot do this. There are no communication channels that are in the, the physical realm. So the agent needs to reside somewhere, whether here, whether here, whether you know in a satellite, whether in some you know ground station, whatever it is, it needs to be somewhere. But the centralization is that there is a single policy that uh, it's going to um, output that action, the joint action uh, distribution. Basically, what are the actions for this guy? What are the actions for this guy? This is centralized control. We don't really like this uh, paradigm. The decentralized perspective is this one that you, hear, so you have here, in which if there are two vehicles, there are going to be two agents selecting actions, two policies, selecting actions independently uh, from each other. There is a physical separation of those platforms that are being controlled, and therefore, uh, these agents are separate. Okay. Now, the point here, though, is not necessarily whether you can use the same policy in the two different platforms. You, this platform can be identical. This can be a one agent after you train, and then you put that agent here, and you put that agent here. The point that I'm trying to make is that you have a decentralized control of the platforms, that there is not a single agent controlling the two platforms at once. Hope that makes sense. There is not one agent controlling the two platforms at once. There are two agents. Each is controlling their platform separately. Okay. There's also this concept of training and execution. And, you know, you're probably familiar with training and evaluation and validation and so on. In RL, we call it training and execution. You can think about it as uh, evaluation, training and evaluation. But the point here, though, is that it's very different what you can do during training here on the left than what you need to do during execution. The context is different. And the things that you, you can do to train performance for a an execution moment, this is a World Cup final, right? The top time of you know playing soccer and whatnot. Um, that transition here, that difference is big. And in the multi-agent sense, we use this a lot. We leverages, leverage, leverage this uh, all the time. Um, and so I want to show you how uh, we do this often. Right? You can use it for <clears throat> using training for a curriculum. You can train agility. You can train speed. You can train, you know, you can do shooting practice. You can uh, improve flexibility, prevent injuries. <clears throat> you can even have, um, you know, a completely different amount of like information, maybe expert uh, replays. Um, you can have lots of different things that get you better here that in that are not allowed during execution. Um, you can even, um, you know, talk and come up with tactics as a team, what are we going to do when we go and execute, okay? <clears throat> so bringing it all together and then giving you a, a recommendation as to what solution can be implemented or solutions can be implemented uh, for, for the multi-agent problem. Uh, you can imagine here you have, you know, two agents that need to collaborate and learn to cook, right? By the way, I, I wanted to mention real quick that in the context of curriculum, this is actually very, very interesting. Um, an interesting approach that is interesting not just for um, multi-agent, but also the single agent case, but in the multi-agent in particular, the adversarial context, this is very, very, very powerful technique. And in fact, the algorithms such as AlphaGo, uh, so, such as uh, AlphaStar, 
uh, Dota 2 uh, agent and so on, many of them were trained in an adversarial context. And the way that you can use what, what I'm gonna be explaining later, uh, al alongside a curriculum that uh, basically helps the agent improve um, you know, progressively with the opponent, getting better as the opponent gets better, that adversarial nature um, helps you move up in your performance ladder. But, you know, in, in the context of, let's say, this problem that you see there, overcooked, then you are not necessarily adversarial, so maybe that doesn't exactly work the same way, but it still works in certain ways. But I'm going to illustrate the algorithm, okay? You have two agents, this guy controlling that uh, player, and then this guy controlling this player. The naive approach to all of this is going to be what is called the independent actor critic. And then so basically you have an actor and a critic that is controlling, that is used by this agent and controlling this platform. And then you have this here. Okay. And you may ask like, well, what's the point of using actor critic there? I mean, you can use A3C there. Yes, you can, right? I'm not saying that that's going to have the best performance, but that is multiple agents. This is one agent. This is another agent. They are separate. In fact, you can have an A3C in one side, and you can have, you know, maybe you feel fancy, and you're going to implement as well a PPO here, or maybe the DQN, right, or whatever it is, right. But the point is, though, in this case, these agents are uh, independent. So we typically refer to as, uh, th this as independent DQN, independent actor critic, and so on. We also have the version of the centralized critic, you know, with the, with the knowledge that, that, that you learned, as, uh, you know, uh, centralized training versus decentralized execution. The centralized training really comes to the fact that you can actually, you know, use this uh, centralization here of the value function. And so in this view, you have an agent that is controlling this player that has this policy and this uh, value function that is being shared. This policy, again, is decentralized. This is being shared. So these are independent. They can be used by these agents separately. And this component over here is being shared. So what's the point of sharing that, you know, besides, you know, you can, you can train it faster and so on, but why not sharing everything? Like what, what are we doing exactly? Well, the point really of sharing that is this, is that you can actually add privileged information to that uh, network because you need to realize that during training, you need this value function, but during execution, you only need this thing over here, the policies. The policies, again, you input a state and the output is going to be the actions. That's all you need to control the platforms that you need in the real world. You no longer need a critic to do things, right? So what we can do with that, with that knowledge, is that the critic can, is, it's a free for all. You can do what, it, what you want with it. You can do very cool things, by the way. So if you have an opponent, you can add the true opponent information to the critic. And that feels like cheating, but it's actually commonly done. If you have teammates, you can have information about the teammate here that is perhaps not something that you can use in the real world. Like if you have platforms and there is no communication channels between two platforms, uh, when you are deployed, there's no communications, but during training, you can communicate, you can do that. You can actually use information and share information during the training phases of uh, these agents. So again, the privileged information is the addition of information uh, that could be teammates, opponents, or things that you consider are relevant. Maybe in this case, it was going to be distance to the to the onions, or you know, distance to the plates, or whatever it is that you want to do, or what is the uh, your teammate doing? Now, in the, in in the case of overcooked in particular. This is fully observable, right? So there's a little bit of uh, a non, uh, 
there's no need for some of these things. But if you get clever, you can actually leverage these architectures and have very interesting solutions. <clears throat> and if we advance and go one more step, typically there is something called uh, sharing weights, the, you know, share weights between, between the networks. And this is that during training, you have only a single, we went all the way back to a single network, right? You have only a single network that later you can use that uh, or a single, you know, two, two networks, obviously the, the policy and the critic that is, you know, the critic is being uh, passed in privileged information. But the point is that the policy is also sharing networks. Now, I'm not saying that this is better than what I showed before, right? So what I showed before is these two policies. And then I'm showing this as if, as, as if it is a progression from the previous one. And that's not the case, okay? So <clears throat> if the behaviors that you're trying to get are very homogeneous, they are very similar, they're doing exactly the same, you may wanna have a same network, right? If you have very dissimilar behaviors that you're trying to learn, um, then you, you either want this to be separate or want to add some observation with, you know, I'm going to call it agent type, you know, agent type, you know, green hat versus blue hat. You know, I want blue hat to learn something versus green hat, hat to learn something else, right? So you can actually do that modification in there so that uh, now your agents learn to collaborate and not necessarily to overlap as to like, you should do this and, and uh, we're, we're all doing the same thing. So yeah, to, to, to wrap it up, I think that's, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to leave it at. Uh, the, the, um, the sharing of the weights is, could be beneficial but it's not necessarily so. So be careful with that, uh, but just be aware of the tools and the things that you can do that are commonly done as well. And in particular, I want you to see the words, right? So the sharing of the weights is what's referred to. Privileged information is sometimes it's called augmented information, but privilege is more commonly, and then centralized critic and independent actor critic. Okay, so. And to close it out, to wrap it all up, you have this paradigm of centralized training with decentralized execution, which is foundational, fundamental to many of the algorithms that you see in multi-agent RL. And my recommendation, if you've never implemented any algorithm, any multi-agent RL algorithm, my recommendation is that you start with an actor critic method and then centralize the critic and then go from there start experimenting from there. But the idea here is the important ones, right? So you have this, you, you put it all together by saying, there's a phase for training, there's a phase for execution. I am going to use a policy and a value function with privileged information that is going to be used for training that policy. And this policy is gonna be used by the two agents or not, I'll let you decide that. Uh, and please discuss, because I think this is an important point to discuss. Um, uh, so yeah, so you have that policy that is gonna be used by the agent. So you train this way. And then after training is completed, guess what you do? You send this to the trash, and then you have a new, shiny, awesome performing policy, or maybe two, another policy, right? And what you're gonna do, you're gonna map that policy then to this agent, in a decentralized execution fashion. This policy is gonna control this player. This policy is gonna control this player. And again, depending on how you wanna train them, what you wanna do, what you wanna accomplish, you can do many things to this uh, critic over here. You can do many things through our training. And uh, as long as you keep the policies using the same observations, as we are asking for, or that as these these uh, overcooked AI uh, environment requires, then you're good. You can you can just decentralize that execution. That policy is going to be that ultimate ultimate uh, object that you quote unquote deploy to the real world. 
So, okay, so I hope that was very useful. Um, I hope you like this, uh, this, uh, this lesson. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to try to respond. And if you want uh, some other uh, type of agent that you want me to discuss, then I can let me know as well, and I'll try to add that uh, to the entire set. All right? With that, good luck, and have fun.